say this, time is a natural creation. And it was created for you to have dominion over. Time was never meant to dictate to you when you do something and when things should happen. Praise God as you see that open your Bible once again to Isaiah chapter 8. You've been with us for any time. You know we're talking about living the supernatural life. Living the supernatural life. Isaiah 8 verse 18. Yara am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in, is in, in Israel. We are for signs and wonders from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Praise God. Zion, of course, is talking about Israel. That's a type of the church. You and I are that church today. And so God has given his people in the earth for signs and wonders. In other words, those that do not yet have covenant with God, there must be enough for them to see, to say, I want to serve the God you serve. Have a look at this at Genesis chapter 1. You know, God created, the Bible begins in verse 1. In the beginning, He created, and He gets down to verse 26, and the Word says that God said, Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Now, everything else He created, every other living thing, whether it was trees, whether it was birds or animals or fish, He said, Let each one bring up after their kind. So each birds produce birds, and, and cats produce cats, and fish make more fish. And, are you with me? You, you don't get a, a fish born out of an eagle. You know, so uh, eagles make eagles. And yeah, God, when he creates man, speaks of himself. Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, created to be just like God. Now, we will never be God. There's only one supreme creator, only one living God, but you are his son, you are his daughter. You are the offspring of God, is what he says. You're born of the God species. Hallelujah. Say that, I am born of God's kind. And he says, let them have dominion. Everybody say dominion. What's dominion mean? domination rule over let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over the cattle over the earth over all the earth over all the earth over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them underline that that's all i'm going to say Male and female, God created them, and he knows what he's doing. Amen. If he put you in a body, he knew what body he's putting you in, and that's what he wanted you to be. Uh, if God called me as a pastor, if I went out and tried to be an evangelist, I would fail miserably, be upset, always wondering why no one supports me, why nothing ever works. And, you know, God said, I didn't call you as an evangelist. I called you as a pastor. So whether I like it or not, I have to be a pastor. Amen. So if he created you male, be that male. He created you as female, be that female. That's God created you. Say amen. I've done nothing else but read scripture. So if you have a problem, take it up with the creator. Verse 28, then God blessed them. And he said, be fruitful, multiply. That does take male and female. That's the only way you're going to fulfill that. Be fruitful, multiply. Amen. And then he says, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, family, you notice God, when he created man, expected him to have full dominion. And in our study so far in the series on the supernatural, we found out that Adam fell from that. And he fell from discerning to learning. 
See, when the Bible speaks about him eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that word in the Hebrew for knowledge talks about learning from experience. In other words, it is, uh, it's the trial and error method of learning. It's, even our scientific world does that. Uh, science tries things out, does experiments. God never expected for us to live experimentally. You can go to God and get the inside information without the experiments. You don't have to try this and try that and try this and hope this works and somehow find out the solution. No, you go to God, He can give you the inside, inside scoop. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you want to live that way? That's exactly how Adam felt, uh, lived. But when he fell, God said, now you're going to struggle and battle. So... In this discernment, in the ability to live by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that's where we saw Jesus knowing what he would do. He knew how the supernatural worked, so he was always in that place of being aware of what God is doing. And we want to be in that constant place of awareness. And so that's how God had designed for Adam to live, to live this life of dominion. And you can see this was God's intention for man. Look at Psalm chapter 8, verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. Now take note of moon and stars, because I'm going to refer to that just now. Now notice it's, it's listed here, and there's a reason God's revealing something. He's made all this creation, the moon and the stars. Everybody say moon and stars. Say so you have ordained it. Now, now you understand it's not just he created, he ordained them. That, that means they're given a function. There's a function that they're given. You have ordained what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him. You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you've crowned him with glory and honor. Now, that word angels right there, if you were reading that in the English, that's what you see as angels. But if you went to read it in the Hebrew, it's the word Elohim. Elohim. That's the same word when Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Go do the study. Get out concordance and look up the, the Hebrew words. When Elohim said, let us make man in our image. That's the word used there. So, what is man that you're mindful of him? You create him a little lower than Elohim. Say, that's me. Say, that's me. You crowned him with glory and honor. And you made him, for what reason? To have dominion over the works of your hands. God's a designer. He's a creator. He's, he's always making. He's, he's, he's got to grow. It's just his nature. He's got to speak out and make and for it. But he's, he's making all the stuff. But for what reason? I want somebody to enjoy it. It's not for me. See, God is the ultimate giver. He doesn't do it for him. He does it to bless others with. But who are the others? You made man to have dominion over the works of your hands, and you put all things. How many? How much? All things under his feet. Say this, God created me to have dominion over all his works. So what works are we talking about? Genesis chapter 1. Go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. For what purpose? To give it to you. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. What's that? Well, God is light. And so he's taking this glory from within him, 
and he's putting it out there as a canvas. Something in the natural, a natural manifestation. I mean, you yeah, might be artist, paint, or something like that. You know that when you start painting, uh, you've you got to prepare the place for the painting. You don't just paint somewhere. You prepare a surface, and that's light. Now he has this canvas available, and from that canvas he starts his creation. And as he begins, he begins to create. Now, light already exists. And then, verse 3, God said, let there be light. There was light. Verse 4, God saw the light. It was good. And he divided light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, you keep reading. From that moment on, he begins with the rest of creation. And he puts trees in the thing, puts animals in the thing, and he goes through it. But day four, everyone say day four. Verse 14, God said, let there be lights in the firmament. But now there's already day and night. There's a form of light. But now this is a different light. Come on now. We're going with what the Word says. I'm talking to people who want to understand the supernatural. I'm not talking about hardened scientists and, blah, 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 and yeah, but I, then, you know, I just don't see that. Well, then don't expect to walk in the supernatural. We're going to walk in the supernatural. We have to get to a place where I'm not moved by sight. Faith is a substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen or, or, or heard or felt or experimented or... A plus B must be C. No, you understand with God, that's natural laws. This is what he's busy with you. I want to show you this. Because if you get what's been said here, it's going to take you into another level of supernatural. How do you want to live that? So he says, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night. Oh, hang on now. So we already have day and night understood right on day one. But God needs something to manifest in the natural. So he brings these natural elements in so that they will be used to divide the day from the night. Listen to this now. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and Years. Oh, you must. Days and years were only created on day four. That's when time began. If anybody wondered, you know, you've heard me say it before, time is a created thing. Where does he get that from? There it is. There's your days, nights, seasons. See, in the realm of the Spirit, you understand in the realm of the Spirit, there is existence. There, there's a flow, but it's on a dimension we don't understand if you're locked into a three-dimensional world. In three-dimensional world, you have a beginning and an end. But God crucified Jesus before the foundation of the world. God is so God has a way of being yesterday, today, and tomorrow, but he's the same at all times. So there, but you still have a flow. Things have to happen then. There was a war in heaven. Satan tried to take over. God brought Michael in. They got rid of him. He was booted out. There's a flow, but it's not on the dimension of created time. It, it, it still has to play out, but it can be moved around. So... God's creating this to function, to, to work with. But here's the thing. Why was it created? Why was it created? Why was it all created? For you to have dominion over. The animals were created for our use. The trees and the fruit and the seeds were created for us to eat. It's for our supply. 
Everything that was made was for man to have dominion over. And so even when God now on day four introduces time into the equation, now he needs to get this thing on a clockwork so that it all functions and it cycles and it works correctly. He doesn't allow that now to become the dominion. He still, it's a created thing. It's still part of the earth's creation. It's a natural creation. Say this, time is a natural creation. And it was created for you to have dominion over. Time was never meant to dictate to you when you do something and when things should happen. Everybody say time. Say this, time is a created entity. Look at John chapter 2. On the third day. Okay, so that's a created day. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does that concern have to do with me? My hour's not yet come. Now he wasn't being disrespectful here. Woman there is a term of endearment. He's, he's, he's respecting his mother. You know Jesus wouldn't do that. Man. But he's saying, I'm here for miracles, but really my time hasn't come yet. And so his mother turns to the servant and says, whatever he says to do, do it. I just love a woman of faith. It's like, I, I hear, but just do it anyway. Amen. It, it, you see, a person of faith doesn't understand the word No. A, a person of faith doesn't understand the word can't. See, with God, we, 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 all things are possible. I, I know with man it's impossible, but not with God. Yeah, but you've got to be realistic. Where? Where? Show me where. No, uh, show me how it's realistic to walk on water. Show me how, come on now, how, how can that be realistic to just walk through a wall? I mean, come on. See, when we get to the supernatural, we're going to have to divorce from the limitations of time. So she says, go ahead and do what he says. So there was set there six water pots. How many? According to the manner of purification, the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. How many? So how many is that? See, we're back into natural counting now. That's, that's between 120 and 180. So we can average it out. Let's call it 150. Amen. I'll get to that now. Now, let me just show you this. Jesus said, fill the water pots with, with what? And they filled them to the brim with water. And he said, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water, notice they tasted the the water that was made wine. What? And did not know where it came from. The servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You kept the good until now. This beginning of Signs. Everybody say signs. Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. And what happened? His disciples believed him. See, when you see a sign, it changes you. He just spoke. Time was taken out of the equation. He knew how to have dominion over time. The point I'm making, Jesus controlled time. See, family, we have to start thinking a different way. Get rid of that concept of time. I mean, Jesus in Luke chapter 5 arrives with his friends there and he asks Peter, may I use your boat? 
And when he's finished preaching, he says to Peter, now launch out for a catch. What does Peter say? Time. We worked all. Night was created. Because that's what it's going to take to produce a catch of fish. We've worked all night, and nothing even happened in that time. Jesus says, launch out. Listen to me. I'm going to show you something. Okay, at your word. At your word. At your word. I'm the fisherman. I know what's reasonable. I know the time. This is the wrong time to fish right now. Should have done it last night. We didn't even get anything when you do it at the right time. But I know you enough that if you've said something, I can put all my expertise aside. I can put my concept of time aside. I can put aside what I think is reasonable. Let me do it. And he throws out the broken net. Because all of a sudden, there's so much fish, their net begins to break. And Jesus said, throw out your nets. I'm, I'm going to show you something here. And there's such an abundance. They're now calling their friends in and all the other partners. And they all, and all their boats are sinking under the weight of this. And the Bible says they were shocked. Why? Because even in the right time, they have never seen a catch like this. This is multiple catches happening in one moment because Jesus had spoken. I've got a God that can do it without the need for time. Today. Today. How are you ready for your today? Come on, stand to your feet and give Jesus praise. Every head bowed, every eye closed as Christians pray. We want to make sure before we leave here today, the most amazing supernatural event, as you heard me talk about it earlier on, is when you call on the Lord, and the moment you call on His name, you're saved. That's your day, today. Maybe you've been thinking about it. Maybe you're wondering whether I should go to church or not. Whether, you know, No, you're here now, and you love God. That's why you're here. You may be looking, you may be seeking, whatever the excuses we use. No, today is your day of salvation. You've not yet called Jesus your Lord. The Bible says if you believe with your heart, Jesus is raised from the dead. Confess with your mouth that is your Lord and Savior. You will be saved. I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive and I believe it. I call you Lord. You're my Savior. From this day on, I live for you, to serve you, to worship you. One day, when I leave this earth, I'll stand before you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You're born again. Wonderful to see that. Now, listen, we have a free gift to give you. It's a, something that's going to help encourage and build your faith. Some guidelines now that you are a Christian. Please go to our website, thebasecfc.org. And under contact us, you'll find salvation. Click on that. The same form opens up. Fill it in. Once we have your details, we'll make sure you get that information as soon as possible. God bless you and welcome home. Come on, family. Let's give our family a great big God bless you. Well, congratulations to all of those that just gave their life to the Lord. If that was you, we would like to get a free pack to you. That pack will help you build your faith and help you in your walk with God today. So what you can do is you can make your way to our website. You can fill in your name and your details and we'll get this pack to you as soon as possible. Well, family, if you enjoyed this message, it's part of a whole series called Living the Supernatural Life. And if you want to learn how to live a supernatural life in a natural world with a supernatural God, you can make your way to our website and you can get this series for yourself and you can learn how to live a supernatural life. Well, family, this has been Wisdom for Life. Thank you for taking the time to watch with us. My name is Joshua Bagg, and remember, Jesus is Lord, and life is a choice. Choose life. 
we invite you to visit us online at alanbagministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bag. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Alan Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At alanbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. As a partner of Allen Bag Ministries, you will have early access to special meetings and seminars with Allen Bag, as well as discounted prices on study material taught here at Allen Bag Ministries. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. You can also catch up on any Wisdom for Life programming, or if you prefer, watch our latest Wisdom for Life programs with Alan Bag on our website. All services at the Bay Christian Family Church are also streamed on our Alan Bag Ministries website, so you too can be part of our E family that also participate over weekends and on special occasions. If you're looking to participate in our services and television programs, or if you're interested in getting hold of some great study resources, whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.